Okay, so identity matrices have ones on the diagonal and zero everywhere else. This is an example of a two by two identity matrix. And you could put the two there if you like, but you can also drop it. So the identity matrix, it acts like an identity multiplier. So we can do A times I, and that's equal to I times A. And if A is an M by N, well then this would have to be I N. And again, if this is an M by N, then this would have to be M. These have to be the same and so forth. And for both of them, the result will be A. And you can see this is an M by N, and this is also an M by N. Let's look at an example. That will be our one. The second one, B2, B3, four, that will be five, and six. Okay, so it's pretty self-explanatory. You add zero, you can commute, and that's still gonna be A. You can subtract the same matrix, you'll get the zero matrix, same size. The zero constant times A is the zero matrix. Constant times A equals zero. If that's true, then one of them has to be zero. Be careful though. If two matrices are equal to zero, they both don't have, one of them doesn't have to be all zero. So basically, if A exists, if the inverse exists, then when you multiply them, A times the A inverse, you get the identity matrix. It has to be both ways. A is considered to be called invertible. If the determinant of A doesn't equal to zero. We'll come, we'll do more on the determinants later. And A is also considered non-singular. Just a note here. So if the, the determinant of A is equal to zero, then it's considered singular. And what this means is we'll probably have a row of zeros if you row reduce and an infinite number of solutions. Here's our first theorem. So we saw a peak of this in the last video. The determinant of A is AD you start with A, do the diagonals, minus BC. So we kind of mentioned this in the previous notes right here. These are pretty much equal. If A inverse exists, then the determinant's not equal to zero. But this is more specifically about a two by two. And we have a formula for A inverse. I will tell you, though, I don't suggest you memorize this formula for the inverse. We're, I'm going to show you a different way how to find it. Not really a proof, but we're just going to show A times A inverse equals A inverse A, which is I. And I'm going to let you do it for homework. You just multiply the two. You multiply this times that. Do as an exercise. Now to find A inverse alternately, and this will work for more than just a two by two, we're going to use the fact that this, we're going to use this fact. We're going to set up the augmented matrix with this equation, okay? Now, recall, though, when we have this equation, A, B is our augmented, okay? So here, we're augmenting I. We're going to row reduce. We're going to have I, and then... I'm claiming that this will be A inverse. So if you write out these equations, this is AX equals I 
from here. Here we write this out. It's i times our x is equal to a inverse. Well, we can see that x is equal to a inverse from here. Okay, so that's what how we're going to do it. Let's show an example. So there's our idea that we're going to do. And we're going to we'll reduce it, both sides at the same time. We have our 1, so now we can zero this out. We want 0 there. Minus 6 plus 4. Minus 3 plus 0. Minus 3 times 0 is 0 plus 1 is 1. So now I could divide through by negative 2 to get my 1 there. But before I do that, I can see these will zero this out. So I'm going to zero that out first. And then at the same time after I do that, I can divide the bottom row by R2. So we see here this is I, so this is A inverse. We still can check. And we can check. I'm not going to check both. I'm just going to check one of them. Yep, it works. So the theorem says, let A be an invertible matrix, and if that's true, then the inverse is unique. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna prove this, but we're gonna assume that the inverse is not unique. And so clearly that's not what the proof says. So this is a proof by contradiction. We hope to get a contradiction and once we do, then that means our original assumption isn't true. So we're gonna let two matrices be inverses of A. That means they're not unique, it has more than one. So if both of them are inverses, then I can multiply the inverse times a, and I should get i, definition of inverse. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to left multiply by the matrix C. Since it is a matrix, so I'm going to take a, b equals i. Since it is a matrix and they're not commutative, I'm going to multiply both sides. You have to do left multiply on both sides in order for it to be, remain true meaning I could not put C here because that would be right multiply. That would be wrong. So we have to left multiply. Now that I've done that, I'm going to group these two together. That was our property up there. And if C's an inverse, then C times A is I. And then C times I, if I is an identity, C times I is C. Well, now I times B is B is equal to C, definition of the identity matrix. And here is our contradiction because these were supposed to be different inverses. Maybe I should have written that. They're not unique. That's our contradiction of our assumption. So therefore, our assumption is incorrect. Done. That's our first little mini proof. So if we have a system of equations, and that's ax equals b, if the determinant of a does not equal to 0, then we know a is invertible. We can left multiply by a inverse. Kind of like dividing by a, but you're not allowed to divide by matrices. So we left multiply by the inverse, and then this becomes i, and we've just solved for x. 
It's the matrix A inverse times B. I wouldn't memorize that. We just do the math and we get our solutions. So we're going to do an example here. So we have a system, AX equals B. We have our A inverse. We just found that one. That's the one we found up here, right here. That was our inverse for one, two, three, four, right there. A, and so this is a two by two, this is a two by one, and then we get a two by one. So top one, this times this is our top one. And there's our solution. We have another theorem. Usually getting started on proofs is the hardest thing. I'm going to focus in on this statement right here, that the product is invertible. We can actually prove that, given A and B is invertible, but I'm, I've decided to just prove this fact. So if AB is invertible, what does that mean? That means AB times AB inverse is equal to I. And then we don't need those parentheses. We need these ones. And so I'm going to left multiply. I want to get rid of this A. So I'm going to left multiply by A. So left multiply by A. Group those together. And that's I. And those I's could be dropped. And now I'm going to left multiply by B inverse. Those can be grouped. That is I, which the I can be dropped because it's identity. So what we have here is, is we proved it. Think of it this way. We don't just distribute that. It's not a power that we're distributing. This is the inverse. And if we're going to calculate the inverse, we first have to take the inverse of B, and then multiply it by the inverse of A. You can think of it this way. If, you're, if you want the inverse, if you put your shoes and socks on, you don't want to take off your socks first and then take off your shoes. You have to do it backwards. And that B would be first, and then that would be second. That would be your so shoes and then your socks. You put your socks on first. So I'm going to just prove the second one here. It's kind of a cute proof. We start with I, and really I want to take the transpose of that. And the transpose of I is I because it's symmetric. But really what I want for I is I want A times A inverse, which I know is I. I'm just building this. Again, this is I. That's this I. And then we know by the property number one is we can take A inverse transpose and then A transpose. So now we have a product here, which again, this whole string, this is I. So we have a product that's equal to I. So therefore, this first one is inverse. Makes sense because the product is I. Okay, if that's true, how do you write the inverse of AT? The is is equal. There we go. This is the inverse of AT. And that is identical to that. We just proved it. Okay, that's it for today. I have a second part of 1.4. It's not actually in 1.4, but I am going to show you how to do proofs by induction.